So what will happen first mainly is, because we have a larger ambulance force than we do a fire uh, brigade, the ambulance will be the first on scene. So what happens is, somebody will dial, what's the magic number boys and girls to call the emergency services? Can't hear you. What's the three magic numbers we call? Yeah, 999. And what do we ask for? In this situation, you ask for all three. We need police, fire and ambulance. Most likely, the police car will be the first on scene. You always have a traffic car driving around in the area. This particular thing, we have the ambulance. So the ambulance crew, who are our first responders, as we say, we're doing a rural demonstration here. So this is where the guys are out in the sticks in a little village. So the ambulance crew then will go on their little run round. These two guys will be trained to be able to first assist this incident while we're waiting for a land ambulance to come. You see them a lot now, they drive around in Vauxhall Vector Estates. First responders, NHS, have them. There's this little car that comes with a paramedic in it. The vehicle will then stop in a safe position to barrier the vehicle. If we're on a main road and the vehicle's had a crash, the last thing that we want is another incident of a car coming down and crashing into an already crashed car. So, the first vehicle on scene will park the, uh, their car in a position that protects themselves while they're doing their first initial assessment of the casualty. They will go and check for airway. Make sure she's breathing. We, in that situation, it totally changes on what procedure we use. Now, the NHS has a particular saying that they call it the golden hour. But the golden hour is critical. The critical hour is, from the minute this crash happened and this person injures themselves, we want to get them to an A and E hospital within one hour. Try to now go for the golden hour, the vital piece of timing that we work from. So let's just say now, this accident has been 15 minutes in. Yep, I need fire, but he's uh, got one case, which is trapped, um, conscious fire? and breathing, but uh, as I say, trapped by some of the uh, instruments inside the vehicle. It's a bit of a good job. Um, so he's just come now and he's telling his control that he needs the fire brigade. So what will happen is now, our magic little toy will go off here. I will set it off manually. Right, that's the guy's page has gone off. As you can see, the lads start on their way in. You will see them get dressed. The turnout time for when they do appear at the station is under two minutes. Generally, you can turn a machine out in about 30 to 50 seconds. If you count it, it's quite a long time. So what we'll do is watch the lads get their tunics on. The first thing they do, you see the two engine drivers. They get into the vehicle, they make sure that the noise and lights work, because the vehicle will be not fit for service if it doesn't. So they do a whaler check, a light check. They will make sure that the, as soon as the crews are dressed, the machine is ready to turn out. Now, they have to get dressed now. They used to get dressed, what they call on the run. But they have to get dressed now before the machine leaves the station because they need to wear their seatbelts. So the first machine will be the officer in charge machine. He's the first one out of the station.
time. Officer in charge will talk to the Chief Medical Officer. Chief Medical Officer, he is actually in charge of this situation. He knows the medical condition of the casualty. The casualty may be suffering from back, lower leg injuries. We don't know. So, what will happen is the two officers in charge will cook, or they will then go to their crews and start get taking the equipment that's necessary to do a rapid extraction from this car. The pieces of equipment then that come off will be what we call the jaws of life, cutters and spreaders. These pieces of equipment are designed especially to be able to cut through up to six inches solid steel. They cut at 720 psi. They are very, very powerful. This is about four tons. So it has four tons of crushing power. The crushing power will cut through any type of metal on a, a car. It it's, it's makes mincemeat of a, the panelling of a, a, of a mod motor vehicle. The other thing we have to be careful of is the things like airbags. Airbag curtain airbags, side impact bars. All the modern safety protection that goes into a car can be dangerous for a firefighter to cut off. So what they do is, as you can see, is they've made the car stabilised. What they do is, uh, they get all the equipment that's needed out. So you can see that the vehicle will be chopped, blocked, wedged. The piece, we use all these types of, of equipment to stop the vehicle from moving. You can imagine if this person has got a uh, broken neck, broken back, pelvis. The last thing you want is three or four firefighters jumping up and down on a car and then making your injury more severe. As evidential for the insurance company to say, did we necessarily need to cut the roof off this car? At this point now, the medical officer has said that the girl's got back and neck injuries. We've accepted that, so we're now going to extract the roof on the vehicle so that she can be extracted from the vehicle in a safe and proper manner, not causing any more injury than she already has sustained. They have a thing, a little piece of blue plastic. That piece of blue plastic is called a teardrop. And the reason for that is it's specially designed to get into the nooks and crannies and it stops any shards, splinters or any... Roof's off the vehicle now, round of applause ladies and gentlemen I think. 